All right, this is for year 11 music one. We've been looking at Hans Zimmer and we're looking at his style. So what I want you guys to do is go on musescore.com and if you haven't got a musescore account, get one, it's all free, but it allows you to download um, a lot of music, uh, which are user arrangements. So for example, over here, I've just typed in Zimmer and what you'll get is stuff like uh, the Interstellar Suite. Um, this caught my attention. This is a full orchestral piece with a bunch of um, um, works that Hans Zimmer has written. But I'll just open a few of them. Okay, a little slow, but here it is. What you can do after you've logged on is you can actually download it. So I'll download a couple of them, load them on MuseScore so that you can uh, see how you can listen and perhaps manipulate the music or, you know, analyze it. So um, let me just get, not liking what this one looks like, but um, I've already got the mashup. What you can also do is you can just click the play button and it will play back from, from there as well. So really handy to have, but it's much better to download the actual file so that you can open it in MuseScore. Here we go. Okay, um, now a couple of things I want to show you guys on MuseScore is how to navigate this well. So first of all, um, it was funny because last year we had um, one student who didn't figure this out until halfway through his trials, so very close to the end of the course. So if I show you guys now, you'd be able to use MuseScore much more efficiently. So first thing is up here, there is a continuous view. That just means that the music will appear as a continuous flow instead of in pages. When you're looking at big scores, oh sorry, when you're looking at little scores, it's often better on continuous view. For example, let's open up our other um, our other file just so that we can give you a a demonstration of why it's continuous view might be good. All right. Um, so if we go on continuous view, it will let you just focus on uh, music one bar at a time. This is how I would write music in um, if there were just you know two to four instruments. It's much easier as a arranger to focus on uh, that instead of seeing multiple lines when you don't need to. So yeah, there we go. Continuous view is useful, but I especially want to show you some of these things in the toolbar. So first one is Navigator. When you're working with a big score, the Navigator is very, very helpful. So let's go back to page view, because that's how music would be laid out. Now the Navigator is a bit like a mini-map. If you ever play any strategy games, you've got this little mini-map where you can you know, quickly scroll to whereabouts you are viewing, and that would be the expanded blown up version. So if you want to get to the very end, you might just go click there, view what it is. This score is really long. I wasn't expecting it to be 65 pages, but this will make navigating a lot easier. So you can quickly have a skim of the, the whole score and decide where you want to start. The other toolbar I want to share with you is the play panel. It's a similar thing. I like to have it undocked so that it's not taking up the whole of the sidebar. Let's just get rid of that. But this play panel is similar to the minimap, but uh, instead you can um, choose where you start. And the great thing is if you're rehearsing music, you can tell it to play a bit slower. I want it at 80% speed at 168 beats per minute. You can turn on the metronome to hear where the beats are. So when you're rehearsing, that's great. When you're rehearsing with a group, so music two folks, you might need a count in, and this conductor gives you one bar in before they play. Yeah. So that's really useful um, for both rehearsing and for when you're analyzing music. Now let's go back to the start of the music. And now I want to sh also show you the mixer. Now this is going to look a little bit too much. I might choose um, another excerpt. Let's try time. Okay. 
Okay, that's got solo piano. That's got solo piano. Let's try this one. Oops, I'll turn that off. All right, so we'll have a listen through this piece. They've got repeats as well. You can tell it not to play repeats by clicking on one of these buttons. But what I want to show you now is the mixer panel. Now what the mixer does is it allows you to change that sound to a different one or even add reverb to the music. So if you want, you can actually ask the playback to add a bit of echo to suit the tone, or you can change the tone to a different instrument altogether. So you might want to hear what it sounds like on the marimba and whether or not that might be the tone you're going for. And so on. So this is quite useful, especially in composition. Checking what sort of uh, timbres might be useful for So that's how you can use MuseScore for analysis. It's a great one for practicing as well, because quite often whatever you're learning, um, there might be a copy of it in MuseScore, and so you can follow the music and you can speed things up, slow things down and so on. So that's quite useful. Now for today, can I get you to look at Hans Zimmer's compositional style? You might want to go onto this website, sign onto an account, make sure you're logged in, and look through a couple of these different arrangements of Hans Zimmer pieces and work out how he expands on a simple idea. So for example, with this one that we heard just then, starts with a ostinato, okay, and he layers things on top. So that's how he did it with the start. Now I want you to listen so that you get his style and you kind of see what techniques he uses as he composes. If you are into um, pieces with more than one instrument, feel free to check out some orchestral scores. Um, analyze that if you want, but really what we're doing is getting an idea of the techniques he uses to um, vary a theme or to develop a theme so that it becomes um, more and more, it becomes bigger in the middle or more dense or more tense and so on, and how he might ease off from that tension as well and release it and relieve it. So there we go. Check that out. And in the meantime, keep learning how to use MuseScore because it's such a great software. We just don't have enough time to talk through every last feature, but I hope you found that useful.